your squad are looking for this weekend? Yeah, we're much the same. Uh, we've got the likes of Dan Casey and Shane Blaney back on the pitch. Uh, that was Dan was obviously a longer term injury. Shane's been a couple of weeks, um, but we've managed to get them back. Um, not any full training. Um, we hope to do a wee bit more with them today, and probably tomorrow. I'd be able to tell you um, if they were if they were ready or you know even as as part of the squad. So those two come back in as well as um, another week's training with like say Andy Halliday, uh, Adam Montgomery uh, and then obviously Sam Nicholson coming in. Sam's going to take a wee bit of time just to get up to speed um, but it starts to give us one or two more options. Young Mark Ferry was cup tied at the weekend there. <coughs> um, Mark's done well in training so um, he's another one that comes into, uh, into the thought process in the very nature I think at this minute in time we've got one fit senior striker so obviously Mark gives us a wee bit of an option and, and, and somebody that can come into the reckoning there. How pleased were you to get the Sam and Callum deals done? Yeah, I, I, I was really happy. Obviously, um, I think everyone can see that it's well, first the, the first protocol is that you you, you want quality in your group. Um, I believe that we get that with the with the two new signings. Um, but also, it's a numbers game, massively a numbers game for us. Um, somebody could correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't remember too many clubs, if any, ever having seven seventy uh, sorry six seventeen year olds on their on their bench at the weekend. A couple of them got on, um, and, and and again it's evident that these lads have done well in stages uh, coming in and training with the first team I'll always be somebody that gives opportunity where possible um, so again very easy for me maybe just to as I see around the country sometimes teams just run with two or three subs and don't you know don't give that experience to young players even to be a part of the group that's that's not what we believe in here we believe in uh, making sure that there's opportunity um, but again I go back to it when when you've got six 17 year olds in your bench it's it's well for me I don't think it was too much made it's a hell of a news story really um, but also from our side of things there's a wee bit of excitement with some of these lads that were that, that were involved there and young Dylan Wells coming on the pitch and making his debut um, obviously a big moment for him um, and we hope that there's more to follow uh, not just from him but from some of the other lads he's seen on the bench he said Sam's not quite ready yet. When it's, it's not. He just he, he needs more group sessions. Um, so he's been he's been working really hard individually. Um, he's been working on his fitness levels. But as we all kind of know uh, in football, that it's the group sessions that that generally get you fully up to speed. It's the minutes on the pitch. Whether that be bounce games or opportunity to come on the park. He'll train with us today. Um, but it's it's just it's just more a case of what is he available for? How much can he do? Um, and try to be methodical in it as well, and that we're not. Expecting exposing more players to injuries we think that we do that on a daily basis but yet we still sit in a situation where we have a um, or have had a lot of injuries over the course of the season well documented so just try to be uh, as intelligent about that as we possibly can um, but hopefully uh, I would think that Sam could give us something uh, at the weekend. You talked about perhaps being a bit light up top obviously with all the going as well is that the next uh, priority for you to add in that area? It's been a priority since uh, the start of the window um, but as, as we all know January uh, stating the obvious we all say the same things you guys will get bored hearing it uh, I get bored saying it uh, January is a tough window it's a really difficult market that is, that's why we say it all the time so we've been trying to strengthen in uh, several areas that we identified long before the transfer window came about but it's not just as simple as clicking your fingers and getting players in, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of challenges that you're met with we've, you know, we've spoke to a lot of players, a lot of football clubs, tried to dress up a lot of situations, some of which look really positive and sometimes you fall flat in your face but I suppose that's part and parcel in a transfer window um, I think uh, you, you, you start to have that wee bit of uh, petulance if you like from my side of things you get a bit annoyed you get a bit frustrated at a number of people along the way but yeah I come in again this morning and you think that um, you always have that plan B, C and D and start to think about the other routes that you start to go down and you know who you can potentially get in and always from my side of things at, at the football club I've said this for, for, for several years when I've been working in the transfer market is uh, that you, you need to have players that want to come to your football club the guys that are sort of jump through hoops to get here are always the best players for you so that's how I'll always line it up and uh, we'll continue to work over the next six or so days whatever it is to, to make sure that we get the best players possible to this football club um, but I think it's, it's pretty evident that that front end of the pitch is, is where we really need to focus on but we've done that since the start of January and before that as well it just doesn't doesn't mean to say that you always get in the players that you want as quick as you want. Sorry, I was going to say you talk about it being a difficult month to recruit, and is that the most difficult position 
to recruit him as well, do you feel? Yeah, it's always hard at, at, at the best of time. The the player that, that's fully fit, that has had a, a terrific six months, um, that's been banging in goals and been a huge influence to their team, isn't available to Motherwell. That's not to say that he can't become a good player at Motherwell or have a good spell at Motherwell, because I think we've seen several of those scenarios uh, in, in my time here. Um, but, you know, I keep laughing. I reference the likes of... Sam Nicholson or Callan Elliott, these types of boys, we, ha we have to do certain aspects of work. Andy Halliday coming in, not been playing at Hearts, you know, so um, it's sometimes you, you you get the opportunity to sign players because they've maybe had a loss of form or they've not had an opportunity to play at the club they were at previously. So there's always a time span in that, um, but again, I, I sort of make light of it and I joke about it. The, the player that's sitting in double figures that's that's been a, a, a major influence at the level um, ha isn't available to other well, one, you don't have the money, and two, the, the club that he's already at is, is, is wanting to keep a hold of him. So it's about trying to be a little bit more creative than that, whether you have to look further afield, whether you have to look at different levels, um, or whether you have to simply focus on people that are available. You know, that uh, maybe the club that they sit at just now aren't keen for them to stay, and you have to try and make it a good environment and a, and a place where you think that they, they can thrive. I think I said that to you last week as well, that um, my selling point has hopefully been how players have developed at this football club. Again, don't know if it's been documented enough, um, but certainly in that loan market, you you can start to rhyme off the same as I can any number of players um, that have grown at this football club with opportunity. Hopefully, with the process that we go through on a daily basis, I hate that word process and need to stop saying it. Um, but uh, I, I just genuinely think that that's my selling point sometimes over money um, is that I believe that we offer up a very very good football club in the top flight in Scotland, um, and and I can sort of point the finger at many players, not just young players on loan, but guys. That have been here permanently, that, that have had real good spells since since February, um, that have grown, that have potentially made the club money uh, and had opportunities to maybe go into that bigger level. Mika Bereth, maybe an example of that, going to uh, the likes of. Uh, Stum grads over in Austria, where they're still involved in European competition. We think we can provide that platform for players. Is, the, is that kind of be the type loan? Possibilities still? Do you have to be waiting to the last minute for those sort of deals where the clubs are seeing what their situation is before letting them go? Yeah, some, sometimes, sometimes they can be as difficult as any other. Um, but I think reference is similar type of thing that I've just said there. I, I believe that what we can do is um, we, we can we can show statistics and we can show numbers that suggest that young loan players coming to this football club. And again, I'll, I'll round them off: uh, James Furlong, uh, Georgie Gent. Mika Bereth, Brody Spencer, these boys that have come here, I would love to think that uh, you know maybe bigger clubs than ourselves that have some young talented players, if they have been made available for loan, um, if there's there's an opportunity to put some of these players out, if there's an interest from us, I would love to think that we'd be sitting at the, the front of the queue because we can actually evidence the minutes that they've played and the success that they've had on the pitch and what the opportunities have become um, by either going back to your parent club or in the, in the case of Mika Bereth been flipped to another club in Europe. Um, and Georgie Gent I referenced just now and how well he's doing and his data and his statistics stack up with anybody else in the league in his position with the quality he's brought but also his defensive aspect in that as well these are all things that we look at all the time um, and it's not just the talking about it I can actually evidence it I, I get so frustrating you've, you've heard me saying so many times that um, we'll sit here with cameras and microphones in front of you and tell you what we think we can do and what we believe we can do and everybody buys into it and everybody starts to believe it I think I can actually evidence to people so I would love to think and we have been working in that fashion that if we're speaking to other clubs for young loan players we believe we can evidence that, that, that the opportunities here and that they'll play and that they'll flourish in this environment but again that, that sometimes still comes down to money that still some uh, sometimes comes down to relationships I think we've seen a lot of that as well in, 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 in terms of uh, one or two clubs that have relationships with, with other uh, other football clubs and maybe that's what kind of steers them in the direction of shifting players to maybe clubs in this country. With Ollie leaving, do you have space for two strikers to come in? Is that what you're looking for? Uh, yeah, I think for, for, I, I want to get one in first and then I'll start to see where I am from there. Um, I want to try and go and see if I can get one player at the top end of the park and then, you know, like, what does that deal look like? What does that leave us in terms of the finances where we would where, where be sitting at the end of that? So there's so many things in question. I, I could sit here and tell you that I want one, two, three, four. Everything depends on money um, and it depends on availability. So that situation is ever evolving. It's changing all the time. We're having to shift the goal.
goalposts constantly depending on you know being turned down by a player or whether we can afford one or if 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 we can afford them does that mean that it's only one rather than two and just by the very nature of where I am just now and I'm a little bit of a pessimist in this front um, and I apologise for being that um, but because we've had so many injuries sometimes we just have to think about you know having that cover and ensuring that it's 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 maybe more than one because history would tell us this season that we've lost so many players and lost a lot of game time to those injuries that we've we've spoken about enough. On that, sorry, one more from you. Just on that subject, is how long will John Abika be out to see? Yeah, we'll be looking at at least another few weeks for John. Um, his problem is hamstring again. Uh, John is going through his rehab just now. Hard for me to pinpoint exactly how long. John's feeling not too bad, but there's there, there's like an agreed one tear in his hamstring. So, as always, the medical guys will tell us that it's it's how quickly that settles down. Um, and John's completely pain free, and that will determine how quickly he can get him back on the pitch. But I'm, I'm I'm I would suggest that you be out at least another two to three weeks. What's the plan for the league season this year that we're back into it this weekend? Just win every game. It's as simple as that. Uh, no, it's, it's, to, it's to go and find a, a, a run. You know, we, we, we made ourselves and have found ourselves hard to play against, hard to beat through spells. And we need to go and try and find another chunk. That's why the cup game was so important to me um, and the football club on Saturday because um, we were off the back of a win and a draw. It gives us another chance to win a game on Saturday. Um, and you just want to try and breed that feeling. Um, everyone will tell you, and I've spoken about it often enough, that once you get into that, that habit and that feeling of winning games, potentially getting clean sheets, creating and scoring chances, as, as, as simple as all of that sounds, um, it is the confidence aspect. Now, we found ourselves a little bit down in confidence through a bad run of games. Um, how do you break the cycle? Well, I hope we have done in terms of those the, th those two wins and that draw that I'm, I'm speaking about in the last three games. Um, so what we need to do now is just build on that and start to thrive on the, the feel-good factor that comes with that um, and, and just get into a level of consistency we're speaking about injuries we're speaking about trying to bring players in uh, get on the pitch train um, and play minutes on, on the park that's when you start to get a real good feel for what your job is on the pitch you, that's where you start to build these relationships with people around about you um, I've, I've been a guy that through winning games of football and going on really good runs that hasn't made a lot of changes there's a reason for that it's, it is you can see that players are brimming with confidence it is that you can see that those partnerships are starting to develop so that's ultimately what we strive for again I think if we can do that we can get that level of consistency in our team selection um, and our performances then for me it always goes without saying that you, you, you generally find yourself in a not bad place, however you look around the country and there's a lot of team strengthening, a lot of teams um, try to put themselves in a, in a strong position for the second half of the season um, and we have to just make sure that we are not only matching that but trying to strive to go beyond it as well Sure, you obviously brought Andy Halliday in last week, how important was it for you to get someone that's that much experience a winner and you talked about the kids on the bench last week, how much they're going to look up to a guy like him? Yeah, just, uh, well it's huge, uh, a few things that are of note to me, um, and again Andy would probably be the first one to tell you that this is just a given with the likes of himself, first thing he does is go and learns all the young players' names, you know, he'll, he'll know the experienced players' names, he'll understand who they are and what they are and what they've done, I know Andy's a guy that's out speaking about football a lot, I know he's out watching a lot of games, um, so his knowledge of, of Scottish football will be, um, will be excellent, but I just love the fact that he was going round making sure that he was trying to build those small relationships just now with the, with the younger players. But even when I watch him coming on the park on Saturday, straight away, you can see those little bits of information going across. You can see the bit of finger pointing and the bit of communication that comes across. So fundamentally that, that comes in. I always knew we were going to get that with somebody like Andy. But the second part of it is that you're getting in a really good player that's played at a high level um, and it has massive experience uh, in football in Scotland and beyond um, so he's a quality player but I love the other aspects he brings to the team and I think that they've been really evident for me but I'm pretty sure one or two of your supporters will have cottoned on to that side of it as well so that's something in game that I feel that I feel helps us I'm forever talking about having that those leaders on the pitch having that communication on the pitch you don't need to be old to be a leader um, but obviously from Andy's side of things 32 um, and you can see in the first few seconds he comes onto the pitch that he has an influence not just by touch the ball or being in possession of football out of possession just by those little nuggets of communication and those bits of uh, advice that you can pass on to the ones surrounding them so I love that element and uh, and, and again I think that some of the younger guys will thrive off of playing in and around Tim uh, as time goes on as well. You've seen obviously your squad's been testing a lot this week in terms of numbers, learned this week there's going to be no winter break in the Premiership next season, we should take on that. 
Uh, I, I, if I'm being honest with you, I probably put my my player hat on a little bit. Having having played the game, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. It wouldn't bother me in the slightest. I know I'll possibly be going against the grain on this, but I'm I'm, I'm looking from a selfish point of view. Um, I was never one that enjoyed holidays or breaks or days off. I always enjoyed uh, just keeping in that rhythm of training and playing. Um, even if you're injured and you're you, you know you're out for a, a short amount of time, being in and about the club's going to get you. Back back as quick as possible um, the other aspect I look at it and again this is selfish to, to, to Motherwell but not, not only that looking round about Scottish football I see so many clubs speaking about their injury list and, their, um, and, 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 and missing so many players for chunks of the season and all the rest of it what is the exact science on that I think we all try to be clever and try to manage our time on the pitch and manage what players do and everything like that so if I've if I seen a real correlation between that injury side of things being better with the break and you know having loads of players available but I'm looking around the country every man's saying the same thing just I think probably looking at uh, uh, Nick Montgomery Hibs had mentioned it yesterday about having nine or ten players out Rangers I think the same just for two of the clubs that played last night um, I don't know I don't know what difference it's making I'd love if somebody tells me that it's making a difference to the availability of players I'd maybe buy any but I'm not seeing a huge difference so it is what it is that's the decision that's been made and as always I'm one for for let's go on with it um, but old school me starts to look at you know in times when we never had those winter breaks I still didn't see as many injuries so um, I'm not going to I'm certainly going to have any sleepless nights over it it's what the clubs have to deal with um, and we just have to go on with it some of the trips to Dubai and various different places will have to get shelved I suppose just for that that one break you get in the, in the summer